The aerial photo is aligned with the survey data in Civil 3D, which helps with visualizing the terrain model. The image includes some geographic information that will help with identifying changes in grade and break line locations. Making sense of more than 600 points requires help from geographic information, like aerial photos. Footbridges are easily identified, but not part of the existing ground model. To get started, create two new layers, one for break lines and another for boundaries. Change the break line color to green. Change the boundary color to red. And make C break lines the current layer. Verify that C break lines is in the current layer and begin drawing break lines. Use the polyline command to draw lines from point to point, but first set object snaps. Right click the object snap button and select settings. Uncheck everything and then check the node box to set the running node snap. Click OK. Click on the Object Snap button to turn it on. Now start the Polyline command. Move the pointer to a start point. C3D finds a node at the survey data point. Click it. Go to the next point and the next. With the running node span on, it's faster to connect points with a continuous polyline but it is important not to miss a point. At the end, press Enter to end the command. Press Enter to restart the previous command and start a new line. It appears that a node snap was missed. Yes. This is no problem. Polyline has an undo function. Type U and press Enter. Notice that the line steps back one link. Now make sure that it snaps to the node and continue. Once the break lines are done, draw a boundary line around the perimeter of the data points. Change the layer to C boundary. Turn off object snap. Start the polyline command. This time draw the polyline just outside the surveyed area. Click frequently to create many line segments. The boundary is much more useful this way when it comes to adjusting the boundary later. Continue around the perimeter. When you reach the starting point, use the close option. Type C and then press enter. The border is done. Now create the surface. In Tool Space, select Surfaces and right-click. Select Create Surface. Complete this dialog box with the name, description, and the surface style. 
Click OK. Return to the tool space. Expand surfaces, then existing grades, and then definitions. Right-click on the point groups and add the point group existing grade. The surface model is created as shown by the contours, but this is not a good representation of the actual ground. This model needs some help. We need to add some break lines. Go to Tool Space, Break Lines, and then Add. Give it a description. Press OK. The command line prompts us to select objects, so click each break line. Break lines only, not the boundary or other lines. When done, press Enter. This list provides information on the break line file. Click it off. Notice how the contours in the creek area show the steep banks and the open channel as it should be. However, the contours show a large dam at the boundary of the surveyed area. This is not right. So define the real boundary drawn earlier. Enter the name and check non-destructive break line to off. Select the object, which is the red boundary line. That removed the contours at the end of the project. But these contours still require modification. Click on the red boundary line to display the grips at the ends of each line segment. Click on a grip and drag it to the area of the contours. Nothing happened, but look at the tool space. The exclamation points indicate that the boundary information is out of synchronization with the existing grade model. So right click and select Rebuild Automatic. Again, Event Viewer opens. Often it is convenient to reduce the size, but position it where it can be expanded if needed. Now the contours in the creek area look correct. An overview of the rest of the area revealed that the model is cut off at the street. That's caused by the boundary line jogging in Grip it and move the grip out a little bit. The model automatically rebuilds to keep up with editing. Continue to look at the surface features to verify that modeling depicts these features correctly. For example, this area is a retaining wall. Contours should be very close together to represent the height of the wall. This is a good time to save. Now this is a three-dimensional model that can be viewed from any direction. First, turn off some of the layers that are not part of the terrain model, such as the image, boundary, and break lines. Save this project before going on to the orbit command, so that if the computer crashes, the project will be saved up to this point. Select the View tab, and then Orbit. Position the pointer in the green circle. Hold the left mouse button and drag the mouse. This takes some practice. Mm -hmm. 
Use the roller to zoom in or zoom out as required. The creek channel is clearly obvious from this perspective. Click top to return to the plan view. Let's turn on the aerial photo. Click the border of the image to display the image ribbon. Here is one way to modify the sharpness, fade, brightness, and other properties of the image. This may be helpful later in projects when drawings are ready for printing.